at Lviv's central station, the way out pulls in. This is the train to Poland, to safety. For so many, the next leg of a brutal journey. They come from cities whose names are now burned into the consciousness of the world. Kharkiv, Maripol, Kiev. Many have survived underground for days. Anastasia Kornienko says she's been underground from the first day of the war. We were living in the subway because our house is so close to the military college and Russians attacked it, she says. She escaped by walking through the subway tunnel to the railway station. She was told, she says, go only on the wood floor and don't touch the contact line because of electricity. There she reunited with her mother and younger sister who came from another shelter. Alona Kornienko says they're continuing on to Poland because their home was destroyed. Hundreds of thousands have come through Lviv, the last time their feet will touch Ukrainian soil for who knows how long. Defending that soil is now up to those who are staying. We have only one request, says Ihor Klimkovsky, to close the sky above Ukraine. While he waits for Western help above, Ihor is doing his part at ground level, manning a checkpoint on guard for enemy infiltrators. Taking photos or video of checkpoints is strictly prohibited. Newsy received special permission to be here. A checkpoint on a road connecting Lviv to the country south. Russian forces remain several hundred miles away. But if they came here, says Ihor, it would be a one-way ticket. Here at this checkpoint, he says, we're looking for Russian spies. We're here to find them and interfere with their plans. The concern is that spies may right now be identifying targets for Russian airstrikes. Saboteurs have also damaged rail lines elsewhere in Ukraine. How do you know if someone's a Russian spy or not? We have lists with information about the spies, with their first and last names and photos, he says. And if you find a spy, what are you supposed to do? Shoot without announcement. Taking out spies is one way to protect ground targets. Another, and this one doesn't require a gun, is camouflage. Vasil Markovich is from Belarus, Putin's most important regional ally in this war. He's been a political refugee in Poland since 2020. Before the war broke out, he decided to come to Ukraine to help. There is aggression from Belarus territory and I want to show that not all Belarus people are against Ukraine. How did all these young people know about this? There is a lot of chats in Telegram, volunteer chats. Ivana Ivanchuk is from Odessa, widely expected to be Putin's next target. She escaped last week. Who else if not us? This is a time when we should just support each other, when we should help each other, uh, help our army to win this war. I don't even know why wars are still exist. While they wait for the battle to come west, the people of Lviv pray for those fighting in the east. At this mass for Ukrainian veterans of wars past and present, a priest asks God to bring peace. This collection bowl is to help pay for war. Music to nurture the soul. And out in the cold, music to rally the spirit. Someone put his piano here to give the refugees patiently waiting for hours something to listen to. An elderly woman sings a patriotic song. The lyrics, Ukraine, my dear country, our love is strong like never it was. She's 82 and a doctor, newly arrived from Kiev and traveling alone. Before she darted off, too quickly for us to get her name. She told us she won't be riding the train out to Poland. Our people will not capitulate, she says. I won't leave. This is my country. This is my land.